welcome to the Hedberg Public Library and our adult program series sponsored by the Nancy Parker Endowment Fund. If you garden, used to garden, or hope to garden, you'll recognize yourself in one or more of the musical comedy skits you are about to see. All of the material is the original work of our two visiting performers, Donna Peckett and Danielle Dresden from Tappet New Works in Madison. Tonight's show, Garden Party Cuttings, is a short version of Tappet's full-length production titled Garden Party. We hope you enjoy Garden Party Cuttings. Take that plant over there. Do you know how much they pay for it? Well, 
I find their currency confusing, mm. but I know what that plant buys them. No, Floem, they buy the plant. And right, Zylum, I get that. I wasn't born last century, you know. <laughs> but what they get when they purchase the plant is peace and beauty. More likely it's a bad back from moving it around. <laughs> Take this! Ooh. Hey, give that back! ninja digger. Really? Is that important? <laughs> They're regular little diggers with special martial arts training from Ooh. secret monasteries in Japan. Ooh. Then they're flown over here. Doesn't that sound excessive to you? If it makes humans happy. <laughs> oh, nothing makes them happy. That's why I'm so worried. I'm verging on morose. We're supposed to be helping our people, and I'm afraid we're just hurting them. How? With gardens. How can that be? We're garden notes. We look after your garden hopes. I know, I know. But I'm beginning to think that heartbreak is the main thing gardens produce. Oh, get a grip, Xylem. What about roots? Gardens are full of them, and that's what our people don't have. And what our people need. Why? So they hold still. Roots pull back when our people pull away. <laughs> Makes for a lot less spinning. Because they're passed out in their flower beds with a digger in their hands. A dreamy. Dehydrated. Gardens are a haven. A hassle. Solace. Soros. Bet. Bet. <laughs> Is it the usual bet? I think so. Great. So? So? Now what? How will I win the match? I don't think you will. <laughs> I don't think you will. Are we turning to stone a little early, or are we just stuck? Uh, my hunch is we're stuck. We'll have to go to the source. Deep throat? No. <laughs> the gardens themselves. Gardens tell stories, right? If you can hear them. Well, let's visit a few. How? We're magical creatures, remember? Right, right. <laughs> I keep thinking you're just short. Oh. <laughs> you know, gardens aren't all peonies and lilies, respite and relaxation. Conflicts grow in gardens, too. Anything grows if it's fed. Humans pour in their ambivalencies and their obsessions. Him. A volatile cocktail that turns gardens into combat zones. <gasps> Look! Oh, no. Invader species around the bend. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh, so no. Do. There's a lot of invader species around, I know. Blow him. Blow him. Tell you, Connie, I admire you. I really do. 
Hey, I'm being honest here. Strictly on the up and up. Corsa, uh, that's mainly what I'm all about. Yeah, the old up and up. Oh, yeah. I grow like nobody's business. You gotta see it to believe it. I can spread ten feet in one season. And I'm easy on the eyes. Sophisticated, casually elegant. Hey, but I'm also tough. Oh, yeah. I've been around. I know how to handle myself in all kinds of situations all over the world. <laughs> yeah, it's called survival training. And I'm about the best there is. Smooth as I am, I'm that tough and uh, more so. Deer won't touch me. Did you know that? Bugs of all kinds pass me by. I can handle all kinds of diseases, too. Not to mention drought. Say, Connie, I just had an idea. Seeing as how you got this great big space, and uh, I'm here and uh, available, what do you say we, uh, hey, where you going? Artemisia Base, Artemisia Base, this is Silver King, come in. Gotcha, loud and clear, Silver King, how's it going? <laughs> made in the shade, good buddy, I've made contact and she's practically eaten out of my hand. I learned the ground cover force to be ready to move in when I give the word. Well done, any idea on when that might be? Can't get too specific yet, oh, here she comes, <laughs> what's that in her hand? <laughs> Hey, Connie, how's it going? Hey, what do you got? Hey, that's a shovel. What are you doing with that? Yeah, hey, be careful. Yeah, look, wait a minute. What? The, listen, can't we talk or something? Wait, don't separate me. What's going on? Yo, what? Who are you? They call me. Mo. <laughs> what are you? One of the three stooges? Very funny. It's short for Mo Narda. Who are you? I'm Artemisia Silver King. Are you an invader or a thug? <laughs> What's it to you? I don't like either of them. Are you an invader? How can you invade your own land? Garlic mustard comes to mind. <laughs> I don't deal with such trash. Hey, you talk pretty tough for someone whose ancestors were weeds last season. Hey, I've been cultivated for generations. Yeah, to feed cows. <laughs> I bet you don't even flower. Yeah, <laughs> I heard about your flower. Oh, sure, you look nice enough for a while until your leaves get that powdery mildew. Not all the time. Then why don't you do us all a favor and get out of here? We don't need your kind in this flower bed, understand me? <laughs> this is my turf, so get out. Go back where you came from. I don't think so. If that's the way you want it. She put me here. Connie? You're kidding me, why? She said something about putting two thugs together and letting them duke it out. <laughs> Better hope you can handle windborne distribution, pretty boy. You met your match, dirt hugger. May the best plan win. <laughs> oh no, oh my, I've been dead headed. <laughs> I won't go to seed. Oh, oh, oh. I've been dead headed.
Jackson. <clears throat> the installation ceremony for the Museum of Fleeting Moments is about to continue. If everyone could please take their seats. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm Dr. Polzer. This is my assistant, Dr. Grill. We're here from Poupon U to present a synopsis for lay audiences of our upcoming paper. Uh, while we appreciate the invitation from the Summertime Cookout Association, it also strikes us as extremely ironic. Uh, we acknowledge that the sights and scents of alfresco dining when the weather permits might readily be grouped among the most pleasant of fleeting moments. But to include mustard in that category, <clears throat> it defies logic. As our research will show, in fact, our findings will demonstrate that not only has mustard been with us since the dawn of time, it has been the catalyst, the precipitating mechanism at work during key moments in the history of humanity. Um, Dr. Grill, if you would, please commence the PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> Thanks to, uh, let us start with an incident which arguably changed the course of human history based on recent discoveries in Tanzania, we have learned that our earliest ancestors were primarily gatherers and scavengers. Uh, they collected fruits and nuts, but only ate meat they chanced upon when they could frighten away other predators. <laughs> One day, inspiration struck. So did a prehistoric thunderstorm. An early human chanced to combine a seed, a fermented something, and raw meat. Ah! But it wasn't enough. Spying the smoldering after effects of a lightning strike, this heroic humanoid took a step which has reverberated through time. She put the meat in the fire and then combined it with the seeds and acidic mixture, thus simultaneously <laughs> inventing the cookout <laughs> and setting the stage for civilized life as we know it. Of course, some would say the two are synonymous. From there, it was only a short step to the invention of the wheel. <laughs> Early humans quickly grew tired of chewing up these tasty seeds and spitting them out to be reused. Some found the flavor a trifle gamey as well. But through intrepid trial and error experimentation, they discovered that smacking the seeds with rocks had the same sort of effect. When some round, smooth stones got into the mix, roller skating and the abacus <laughs> were not far behind. It would be hard to say which has served humanity more. And now I will turn over the podium to my junior colleague, Dr. Colleague. Thank you, Dr. Polzer. <clears throat> Given our time limitations, I understand we have another session coming up entitled Connie's Garden Party. I'll be forced to scale back some of the more scholarly aspects of our research and proceed to another key moment in history. The assassination of Julius Caesar. Get out of here. <laughs> Who among us, familiar with his last words, can doubt the importance he placed upon the most civilizing of condiments? <laughs> Et tu, poupon? <laughs> well, let's fast forward several hundred years to the age of exploration. Although even mainstream tradition
domineering, I mean established scholars, no longer refer to the voyages of Christopher Columbus as the discovery of America, many continue to lump the conquistorial urge under the heading of a search for spices. Well, it was far more specific than that. It was a quest for condiments. Goodbye, Chris. Bon voyage. Bring me back something special. Something golden. Something that's good on sandwiches. <laughs> However, while some may have interpreted such statements to imply that the colonization of the Americas was motivated solely by mustard, a closer examination and reading of the original text reveals the following. Something hot and golden. Suggesting that the gold the Spaniard, Spaniard sought might not have been only mustard-colored bond. And this is something that has forward-thinking researchers Googling like mad hot as well. Thus, it is possible early explorers were not searching for spices, but something spicy. In other words, peppers. Some may go so far as to mention Tabasco. <laughs> but we don't need to bore you with such revisionist fiddle-faddle. Let's move on to something really important, shall we? The discovery of electricity. The image of Ben Franklin with his three-cornered hat and his kite boldly braving the storm in the name of scientific inquiry is known to school children everywhere. But while many have heard of his famous key, few know what it was actually attached to. A sticky can of mustard he was trying valiantly to open. <laughs> Shortly afterwards, mustard manufacturers began putting their wares in glass jars. Electricity, combined with the development of the steam engine as a result of mustard refining procedures, paved the way for an explosion in manufacturing. But the workers of the industrial age needed to eat, and one day, as their wives were using their favorite condiment to make sandwiches for their working men, they had an idea. I know. I'll cut the bread. And I'll have one kid cut the sausage, and another spread the mustard, and another assemble all the pieces together. Was it breakfast time? No, it was not. 
And to those who say, what about brunch? I say, brunch? Researchers don't eat brunch. They don't have time to eat brunch. They're too busy working, writing papers, tracking down facts, drafting proposals, fighting with administrators, and dealing with uppity subordinates to eat brunch. So, clearly, when we think of medicine, we must think of penicillin, and in so doing, we must think of mustard. Yes, what would the modern world be? without the incredible cultural developments of our time, from Picasso to jazz, contemporary dance, and not to mention the Star Wars trilogy. But one achievement stands out above all others, rock and roll. And just what do you think it was that had Elvis all shook up? What made his jam house rock? Just what was it he couldn't help falling in love with? Obviously, it was mustard. peppers. Peppers. Mustard. Peppers. Mustard. Your appointment is up for renewal. Mustard with peppers in it. That's brilliant. You're really onto something, Grilla. A whole new avenue of inquiry. Thank you, Dr. Polzer. Well done. <laughs> and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The work is unending, but exciting and rewarding beyond our wildest imagination. So just remember, when it comes to the history of human affairs, it's clearly condiments that count. There are no blacks or whites, only shades of grays. Poupon, that is. <laughs> With peppers. And now, uh, we would like to conclude our presentation with the following. Civilizations may rise and fall, but one thing survives them all. Their buildings may have all turned to dirt, but you can spill their mustard on your shirt. Make it hot, spicy, or tart and sweet. People love mustard, and people love to eat. Why hitch your wagon to the current rising star, add peppers to the mix, and you'll go even farther when the heroes of the day have lost their luster. We're left face to face with the privacy of mustard. Done. In fact, I 
Nothing mustard is often fat free. Yes, I know there. Research shows how humans can take almost anything to extremes. But just as soon as they dig their own graves, why, they get right to work, digging themselves back out again. <laughs> and they keep them pretty busy, I must say. But take this meeting of Gardeners Anonymous. <laughs> Ooh, they're starting to come in. <laughs> Hello, my name is Rhonda, and I'm a gardener. Hello. Hi, Rhonda. Now is that so hard? <laughs> I tell you, it was hard admitting I had a problem. Of course, I had to do that before I could even dream of standing up again. Now, I am working my way back. Or maybe I should say, on my back. I'm taking it one day at a time. How bad off was I? Well, let me put it like this. When the docs told me I had acute lower doses of the spine, I thought it was some new kind of plant and wondered where I could get some. <laughs> there wasn't much I wouldn't do for plants, but that was nothing compared to what I would do for mulch. The day I ran and got my shotgun to stop a rustler from stealing six of my leaf bales, I had to admit my gardening was more than recreational. I called the cops instead, and I'm, I'm thankful I did. That way, I made sure I kept the leaves. <laughs> mm. Hello, I'm Meyer, and uh, I'm a gardener. All right, let's hear it. Hello, Meyer. Hello, Hello. Meyer. Progressing through the steps pretty well. Well, actually, very well. And that's how I do things. I have to be the best at everything, including being a compulsive gardener. I used to hear people talking about how they avoided nurseries and even Walmart because they'd be tempted to buy plants, and I'd think to myself, you guys are pipers. <laughs> For one thing, I think buying plants at Walmart is uh, the horticultural equivalent of rescuing a dog from the pound. It's what I call a mercy purchase. <laughs> and what could be wrong about that? And for another, as far as I'm concerned, you're not a real gardener. I mean, a real problem gardener. Until you spent the family food money on plants. <laughs> Once, I thinned out some coleus and tried to pass it off a salad at a potluck. <laughs> but I've been coming to meetings and working the program, and I thought I had a handle on it all. I had accepted that I was powerless over three of the P's, plants, pests, and precipitation. <laughs> but I've had a big slip, and I think it's because of the fourth P, uh, poison ivy. At least, that's what I think it is. I, I, I went out in the garden one day strictly for maintenance, and a few hours later, I got this rash. Now, I don't remember any poison ivy in my garden. Plus, I thought I had some jewel weed to take care of the itching, so I went back out to take a look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hear the knowing sighs. Eventually, the neighbors found me wandering the neighborhood, dehydrated and disoriented, moving plants from yard to yard. I don't even know who they were. So now I got to start all over again. I, I'm ready for the challenge. If only I can get rid of this rash. Hello. I'm Casey. I'm a gardener. <laughs> Hello, Casey. And I was also about to say I'm a divorcee, but that hasn't happened yet. And maybe it won't happen if the program works for me. Oh, honey, you work the program. The program doesn't work for you. Right, right. Uh, I, I was hoping that, that I'm just so new to this. Oh, yeah. I I see. <laughs> I can tell I see your fingernails. What about them? Well, nothing. I just see them is all. Uh, Long-time gardeners at this time of year are so encrusted with dirt, they're sort of like campaign ads. I hadn't been gardening long at all when I realized I, 
I had a problem. That's why I'm hoping for a speedy recovery. Uh, depends how deep the roots of your problem go, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> what, what made you realize you were more than just a casual gardener? When it started causing problems with my marriage. Only one marriage? My garden's been cited for alienation of affection in both my divorces. <laughs> uh, at first, you know, he's full of praise for this new hobby that gets me outdoors and keeps me active and increases our property values. He likes how I grow plants from seeds and jokes how his uh, grow lights from his hippie days really came in handy. <laughs> he even laughs when I say things like, a great, big, beautiful orchid followed me home. <laughs> Typical enabler. <laughs> I guess so. He was always covering for me at office parties and picnics because I had to garden. Ditto, family reunions and things. He did start calling me Vampira because he only saw me after dark. <laughs> but then he gets this really big promotion and I show up late to the dinner and gardening clothes and... Oh, that's not so bad. I barely attended the births of my own children. Yeah. <laughs> but then I, I tried to take cuttings of the centerpieces. The things haven't been the same since. Uh -huh. The way I see it, as long as you're not taking plants off the graves of people you know, you're still doing okay. No, well, well, that's something to think about. Yeah. Thank you. I think I'm feeling better already. <laughs> Hello, I'm Letitia, and I'm a gardener. Hello, Letitia. And I'm also here as a condition of my parole. <laughs> Doesn't that sound ridiculous? I think it does. Especially when you consider that my accuser was coming at me with a shotgun. Not only that, she claims I stole six leaf bales but I had actually only picked up four at that time from just alongside the road, which she said was her property, but that's not true. She was trying to move those leaf bales out of the cemetery when I happened along. The other two leaf bales I had were from, well, someplace else. So actually, she stole two leaf bales from me. Which leads me to conclude that the difference between guilt and innocence is who gets to tell her story first. Of course, my record didn't help. <laughs> well, I thought misdemeanors didn't count. And I didn't see how anyone could take those disorderly conduct charges seriously. I mean, look at me. I'm the original straight arrow. But there you have it. My friends and family members were going through a phase a while ago where they thought I needed intervention. So they tried to get plant and garden stores not to sell to me. <laughs> Nobody bothered to tell me about it. So when I showed up at the stores, <clears throat> mayhem ensued. But if they think that was mayhem, wait till they see what happens when I cross paths with that heathen who stole my leaf bales. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, Plan Delight's nursery catalog, just one look. I don't think that's much of a slip. Look at that hibiscus. A, the chartreuse wiggles hosta. I can't wait to get a hold of that one. My, oh, that hey, Rhonda, Rhonda. <coughs> Rhonda, that, that, that woman you call the cops on is here, and she's not happy. Well, let her do her worst. I'm packing, you know. <laughs> you brought your shotgun to a meeting of Gardeners Anonymous? Better than that. I got my ninja digger with me. <laughs> <laughs> I figure I can handle anything. Anybody sends my way. Oh, most likely. You know, I bet... Most of the people at this meeting are carrying garden implements, <laughs> either on their person or in their vehicles. <laughs> it's enough to invade a small country or a large garden. <laughs> but I think of it more as a symphony orchestra.
Rhonda! Uh-oh. I guess you caught me. Uh -huh. I guess I did. Could I look at it? Oh, head. <laughs> Knock yourself out. Oh, look at that. That's gorgeous. And how about that? Oh, my. Look at that. I've always... These plants, they're just making me drool. I've always, I've always wanted to grow that, but it won't grow in our zone. Wait a few years till global warming really takes hold. <laughs> That's great. I mean, that's terrible. Oh, hey, see, Rhonda, would uh, would you consider looking at a, a plant catalog a slip? Uh, well, I'd say it's more like a methadone. <laughs> it's uh, not exactly the real thing, but it can be addictive. One of those irresistibly seductive, fleeting moments. Oh, that's it. I can't take it anymore. I gotta go to it. Summer's so short, I can't sit out the whole season. Besides, the end of season sales are fantastic. But I thought you were worried about looking at a plant catalog. Oh, what can I say? In for a penny? In for a pound? Of mulch. <laughs> I gotta go. Bye. Oh. oh, my. Hey, there's still bulbs to plant, though. And, and, and maybe even some perennials. <laughs> But just like baseball, I guess it can uh, wait till next year. <laughs> Say, Meyer, uh, Meyer, uh, wait for me. Meyer, here I come. I think a lot of gardeners and out of his meetings end like that. <laughs> what can I say? How much harm can they do? It's a beautiful hobby. Gets people fresh air. Hello, Em. Hello, Zylan. I hope that you are not too worried about how things turned out with Gardeners Anonymous. Not at all. Well, you know, at least gardeners have good taste. I was hoping you'd say that. They just need to learn that uh, there's perspective in everything, a time and place for all things. Especially plants. Oh, Floem, you are so right. Especially plants. <laughs> Just a 
plant that's out of place. A weed is just a plant. A weed is just a plant. A weed is just a 